Hi, welcome back. This is part two of section 2.3 for Math 1120. We're going to pick up again on number eight. This time we're working on limits that go to infinity. Um, so we're going to finish off our last two pages of notes with these problems. And so just to remind you, I'm back on page 45, I'm looking at number two on page 45, where we're talking about limits that go to infinity. So Remember that if we can get a problem down to 1 over any power of x, it could be x, x squared, whatever, we know that the limit, if x is going to positive or negative infinity, is 0. So what we're trying to do in this indeterminate form, when you have a polynomial over a polynomial, which is what we're looking at in numbers 8, 9, and 10, right? But polynomial over polynomial, and x is going to either positive or negative infinity, it says that we want to divide each term by the highest power of x, okay? Um, so when we do this, that's kind of what we're looking at to see what's left. But the nice part about this is that if you remember this, this will help you not have to do that all the time. We're going to do it today. However, if you kind of remember this from algebra about rational functions, you really don't have to do it, okay? So what I want to remind you of is you kind of know these words, but in a problem when you graph, if x is going to either positive or negative infinity, that's what we call the end behavior, okay? What's happening on the ends of the graph? So for example, if you have a graph that looks like this, then both x going to positive infinity, the graph is heading to zero. And on the left side, when x goes to negative infinity, the left side is also heading to zero. Those are called end behaviors. So that's what this is really asking you for when you see a limit going to infinity or negative infinity. It wants to know what's happening to this graph at the ends, okay? Are the, where are the ends going? Sometimes the ends go to zero, sometimes they go to just a number, and sometimes they go to infinity themselves. So those are the three things that we were discussing on part one on what's going to happen to this rational function. So it all depends on the degree. So it all depends on the degree. Okay? All right, and I think, I've got a little typo here, but when you're determining what the limit is, you're going to divide each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay? Not in the whole problem. You're going to divide everything in the problem by that number. But you're looking for what's the highest power of x in the denominator. That's what you're going to divide each term by. Okay? All right. So make sure you make a note of that. So that makes sense to you when you go back and look at this. Okay? All right. So let's just look at number eight, and let's talk about the degrees. So do we see that the degree in the top is three, and the degree in the bottom is two, right? X cubed is the highest power in the top. X squared is the highest power in the denominator. So this problem is what I call top-heavy, if I could write. Okay, it is top heavy because the degree in the top is bigger than the degree in the bottom. All right, let's look at number nine. What is the highest degree in the top? That would be four, x to the fourth. And the highest degree in the bottom is also x to the fourth. So this is the one I would call that equal degree. Okay, and obviously on the bottom, <laughs> This last one on number 10, the, the highest power in the top is 3, and the highest power in the bottom is 4. So 4 ha is a bigger degree than 3. So this is the one I would call bottom heavy. So you're going to hear me say those words, so I just want to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. I like those words better than trying to get you to remember this stuff, okay? Because 1, M and N, some of you will think M is top and is the bottom and then you get confused so you know I think of it this way so when I look at a polynomial it's either going to have equal degrees the degree in the bottom is going to be bigger the degree in the top is bigger so we're going to go back to number eight where it was top heavy if it's top heavy my answer is either plus or minus infinity 
Okay, that, that's it. If it's bottom heavy, my answer is zero. I don't have to do anything. And if the degrees are equal, then I have to take the ratio of the leading coefficients, what the numbers are out front. However, we've, we're going to do this today so you can see where this comes from. Because by doing this, we're either going to get this stuff or we're going to get numbers. Okay, so I want you to see where it comes from. So these next three problems, we are going to work out using that rule. All right, so number eight is top heavy, which means my answer is going to be plus or minus infinity. Okay, I know that based on those definitions on that page I just showed you on page 45. The rule says take each term in the problem and multiply, I'm sorry, and divide each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. In the denominator. All right, so what is the highest power of x in our denominator? That would be x squared. Okay, so we're going to take this problem, the limit as x goes to negative infinity, and take each term and divide it by x squared. So we're going to take x cubed and divide it by x squared. We're going to take 27 and divide it by x squared. We're going to take x squared and divide it by x squared. 3x divided by x squared and 9 divided by x squared. Okay, take every term and divide it by the highest power in the denominator. All right, now, any term that has a bigger number in the bottom is going to go to zero. Okay, based on this. Any number that the bottom is bigger, so has a bigger degree in the bottom, will go to zero. So I know it says one over x, but if it was x over two x to the fourth, that's still gonna happen because this will reduce down to one over two x cubed. So we still have a number in the top divided by something with x in the bottom. That's all you need. So any term that is like that will go to zero. So this is kind of nice. So look at your terms. So this one has a bigger degree in the bottom. It's going to go to zero. This one is bigger in the bottom, going to zero. Bigger in the bottom, zero. So I just cross them out. So the only ones I have to reduce are right here. So now I have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So let's go ahead and simplify this. x cubed divided by x squared. What does that reduce to? That reduces to x. And x squared over x squared reduces to 1. So now I just have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. x over 1 is x. Okay? Well, now, if you plug negative infinity in for x, what do you get? You get negative infinity. Right? You plug it in, you get negative infinity. So this limit goes to negative infinity. Which, remember, the true answer is it doesn't exist, right? Limits that go to pl plus or minus infinity, we say don't, don't exist anymore. But we still want to know which way they go for our graphing purposes, okay? All right, so let's try the same thing with number 9. We're going to take each of these terms and divide it by the highest power in the denominator, which is x to the 4th x to the fourth. So take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So we got 4x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus 7x over x to the fourth. Now you're only dividing by the variables. I don't care about the number. So you're just dividing by the degree that's the highest, x. So I guess, you know, here it was just x squared. So I want to make this clear. So when I look at this one, I know it says 5x to the 4th, but I don't care about the 5. What I care about is the x to the 4th. You're dividing each term by that highest power of x, okay? So divide everything in the top, oop, minus, dang it, minus 9 over x to the 4th. So everything in the top gets divided by x to the 4th, and everything in the bottom gets divided by x to the 4th. So each term. Okay, so you can see this is a lot of work. It's not hard work, but it's a lot of work. Now, everything that has the bigger degree in the bottom 
goes to zero. Okay, so I don't have to worry about those. And then all I got to do is reduce the ones that are left. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity, 4x to the 4th over x to the 4th is just 4. And 5x to the 4th divided by x to the 4th is just 5. And remember, the limit of anything when you have a constant is just the constant. I can't plug that in. There is no x in the problem. So 4 fifths is your answer. Okay. All right. And lastly, number 10, the bottom heavy. Same rules. If you're going to infinity, what is the highest power of x in the bottom? The highest power of x in the bottom is x to the fourth. So you're going to divide every term by x to the fourth. Every term by x to the fourth. So it takes a little bit of writing. <laughs> Hard to talk and write. Make sure I get all these right. So, all right. So divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator. All right. Everything with a bigger power in the bottom goes to zero. Everything goes away to zero with a bigger power. So, what are you left with? So in the top, everything went to zero. In the bottom, you have 5x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth, which is 5. Zero divided by anything is zero. You can't have zero in the bottom, but it's fine to have zero in the top. So zero divided by any number is zero. You just can't have zero over zero. That's a different story. Okay, so let's go back and look at what we did. Top heavy, we got an answer of either plus or minus infinity, which is, does not exist. Equal degrees, we got an answer of 4 fifths, which is the leading coefficient, 4 over 5. Bottom heavy, we got 0. Okay, go back to the paper that has the rules. For equal degrees, you take the leading coefficients and divide them. We did, 4 over 5. For bottom heavy, we got 0. And for top heavy, we got negative infinity, one of these two. Okay, <coughs> so if you remember that, do you need to go to all this trouble? No, you don't. Unless you are asked specifically to show your steps and how you got to that. As long as you have this, then that's all you need. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So let's look at number 11. This is the limit as x goes to positive infinity of a top-heavy expression. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. Like I said earlier, I always like the highest power to be first. <coughs> I'm not changing signs. I'm just writing it so you can see the degrees. So negative 3x squared, and that's positive 4. Positive x, positive 2. So the degree in the top is higher. <coughs> oh, glad this is the last problem. Sorry for the coughing. All right, so if it's top heavy, I know this thing either goes to plus or minus infinity, which means I know the limit doesn't exist, right? I know that. However, if I want to use the rules and figure out where it goes, positive or negative, then I'm going to divide each term by the highest degree in the bottom. So I want to divide every term by x. So if I take x, divide negative 3x squared by x, divide 4 by x, divide x by x, and divide 2 by x. So everything gets divided by the highest power of x in the bottom. Anything that has a higher power in the bottom goes to 0. So that's those two. The other ones you're going to simplify. 
So negative 3x squared divided by x leaves you negative 3x. And x divided by x is 1. So this is really the limit as x goes to positive infinity of negative 3x. <coughs> so you put in infinity here. What is negative 3 times infinity? Well, a negative number times infinity is just going to be negative infinity, right? So that's what it goes to, which again, I know is does not exist. <coughs> so I knew the answer before I started. So when you guys practice this, see if you can see those patterns and give yourself a little space and time on how to do that, okay? All right, so you got homework to work on. Let me know if you need any help. And I'll see you back here next time.